It's the Jaden Show, and here's your host, Jaden Cornelius. Hi, and welcome to the 50th episode of The Jaden Show. I cannot believe it's been going for so long, and I've just met the most amazing people. And I'm sure there are quite a few more amazing people in the future as well. I just can't believe it's been really, really crazy that we're up to 50 shows. It's amazing. So thank you so much for supporting this and for your comments and for your shares and for your likes. Please continue to do so. Please continue to subscribe and tell all your friends and even your enemies to subscribe. They won't regret it. It's a really, really lovely show with really, really lovely people. Happy Sunday, everybody. Welcome to The Jaden Show. I'm Jaden Cornelius and today I'm going to be going all the way to the United States of America to meet an incredible man, an incredible sportsman as well. He's a fantastic racing car driver. His name is Emerson Newton-John. Let's go and see a little bit of him in action. Hi, I'm Emerson Newton-John and I'm a race car driver. thing about racing is it's not always just about winning. The challenge of it is making progress. Only one person can be at the front of the field. 11, 12, 15, 20 guys out there who aren't going to win. So even if you have a bad day and you hit the wall and you finish last, there's good stories to tell, there's bad stories to tell. Racing is, is a microcosm of life. When I was about two weeks from being born, my dad was watching uh, one of the 1974 Formula One races. That was a year that Emerson Fittipaldi won the world championship. My dad wasn't a racing fan, but he was definitely interested in motorsport. He said to my mom, hey, what about naming him Emerson? My mom said, that's a really cool name. From the time that I could verbalize, I told him that I wanted to be a race car driver, I wanted to be a Formula One driver. That's all I thought about finding a way to get into go-karts so that I can start racing. I think that there's a little bit of destiny involved. Championships. Hello, I'm Grant Denyer, and welcome to your racing fixed track side. We have some hot open wheeler action for you this afternoon, which does include some new names, including flamboyant Californian Emerson Newton John. Now, that's the nephew of Olivia Newton John. We'll catch up with him shortly, plus plenty of other young stars who are about to do battle in a ferocious season opener. We also go to Adelaide for the opening round of the Nations Cup Championship from the sensational streets of Adelaide. But now it's over to Greg Russ for a shakedown on the new Formula Holden season. Kelly will drive the car that Simon Wills used in last year's championship and it's decked out in Holden Young Lions colours. He'll enter the championship as the man to beat and it would seem his closest full season adversaries will be from NRC Racing's Emerson Newton-John and Stuart McColl, Rolt Australia's Alan Gurr and Hocking Motorsport's Chris Starr. Uh, basically, it seems like a series that uh, drivers are coming out of and they're going places with Mark Webber and uh, Scott Dixon and Jason Wright. It's obviously a car that you can you know, win races here. You're going to go to Europe and the States and, and probably win races there as well. Well, Kelly is out in front and a commanding lead already. This is Alan Gurr coming under siege from Emerson Newton-John. He slots himself up into third position now. So he's moved past Peter Hill on a charge too deep under brakes down into Honda Corner. He's made up a couple of positions there. And look at the marbles on the right front wheel there, Rusty. So you can see a lot of debris on the track, a lot of stones offline. He just locked the inside front wheel there. But uh, Peter on a charge, definitely. He's had a lot more. 
more speed than, he, than it showed in qualifying and testing down here, so he really wants to do well this weekend. Peter Drive. But this year, those seats are occupied by Stuart McColl and the Californian, the 26-year-old Emerson Newton-John, the nephew of Olivia Newton-John, who is looking to do some big things here in Australia and use it as a stepping stone to get maybe to Indy Lights or even into Europe. Well, Formula Holden cars are very good for that too, Greg, because uh, they're very fast, they've got a, a lot of downforce, a fair bit of horsepower too in the uh, V6 Holden engine as we go back on board with Peter Hill. That looks like it's Stuart McColl possibly making his way back up through the field, so an incredible fight back from the guy who these days bases himself in Victoria but has won a stack of titles in go-karting terms in Formula Ford in New South Wales. Some lap traffic for Rick Kelly to contend with, but this young guy has really taken on the challenge of stepping up to a Wings and Slicks car superbly. And these, I know that the team at Barana Racing have been very impressed with his dedicated approach to it. In behind him, Emerson Newton-John is awfully close. We are heading toward the chequered flag in this one. So a strong performance from Emerson Newton-John on debut as well in the Formula Holden ranks. But the opening race of the season will go to this man, the 18-year-old from Mildura. Rick Kelly will take it out. Spirited drive, though, from Emerson Newton-John for second place, separated by tenths of a second. Those guys, there's Christian Murchison. He will finish in third in the Rolt 98 entry. But a terrific performance from young Rick Kelly. Starts the season in the best possible fashion in the Holden Young Lions entry. Emerson Newton-John in second there. McColl getting back to fourth after stalling virtually at the start of the race and having to fight his way from the rear of the field. We go from one open wheeler formula to another. Join us from the Formula Fords right after the break. Well, you've seen the boy doing his thing. Now let's go and meet this week's very, very special guest, Mr. Emerson Newton-John. Emerson Newton-John, welcome to the 50th episode of The Jaden Show. Thanks so much. I'm stoked to be here. How are you doing, dude? Uh, I'm doing well. We, You're looking um, great, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I look like a name in a black screen. <laughs> but you're, you're doing it well. It does look nice. <laughs> yeah, in my DNA. No, things are, things are good, man. Thank you. We, we uh, had just finished the, the total home renovation and then discovered a water leak in the kitchen that got black mold literally everywhere. Oh. And the kitchen had to be all ripped apart. The brand new kitchen. And now they will start construction to rebuild it, you know, hopefully in the next week or two. So we don't have a kitchen. Take? How long is that going to take? Oh, shit. I don't know because we're still waiting on the insurance adjuster from the construction company who made the mistake uh, to, to come back with us with, you know, a number that they're going to give us to rebuild. And then there's the whole thing. Do, do you have to fight with them? Is it going to be oh. a fair number? Yada, yada, yada. Once that's, figured out then the construction start i mean look i'm not going to have a kitchen for at least another two months and i haven't had one now for about a month so we're basically uh, indoor camping i say a couple <laughs> of barbies i reckon mate yeah it's it, you you come up with some interesting ways to do the things that you normally do in a kitchen yeah. you do them on the barbecue you yeah it's it's been fun man not really Ooh. What's what's going on? Obviously, international American professional racing driver. That's not bad. Yeah, you know, that that used to be my title. I had that fa that that fantastic title for about twelve years, and then uh, unfortunately, that's been over on a full time basis for oh God, my twenty one years now. And I've I've gone back and kind of rekindled my career really briefly. It seems every six or seven years, mm -hmm. and things go really well, and I and I show everyone that I, I've still got it, and I can still kick ass. But then there's always a financial hiccup. You know, I can't yeah. find the sponsorship to keep going, so it's not over. You know, while I'm I'm still in in good shape, and I all my faculties are are working. And you're not um, using a walk-in frame. Then I am not it. using any type of, of assistance. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm actually working to to get that fixed. And I have been for a while, but I actually have something, hopefully, that's coming together now that will allow me to uh, 
to to get back and kind of tick off some of the remaining boxes that I would like to that I've okay. you know always had the dream of since I was a, a young boy. Super exciting, man. Well, you obviously yeah, come yeah. from a, a bit of a musical background, judging by your surname. Could music yeah. be on the cards for you, or are you just leaving it to the others? Oh, man. You know, it's weird. It's I would love to have that talent, and I don't uh, I me don't too. have the talent <laughs> for the thing. Uh, I don't, man. My, my, my aunt, you know, the, the wonderful singing Livy, she always told me that I sung well and that I should consider doing something with it, and she offered to, you know, pay for me to have her vocal coach, you know, do all the things that, that he could do uh, to maybe get me to be good. Yeah. But, you know, I was young and I was racing cars professionally and that was just not of interest. And I think back on it, man, I'm like, oh, I should have yeah, taken her up on that. But now, now you've got more time while you're waiting for your kitchen to be rebuilt. Could there be a guitar <laughs> lesson on the horizon or something? Just say. Well, I... Probably not singing because I don't think one. You, your voice doesn't seem to really get better as you age. It seems to get less good. At least that's what I've seen from the not from, not for my aunt, of course. Oh, so that could we might have to edit that bit. <laughs> but everybody, well, I mean, look, even oh, if course, even let's just say for the sake of argument, her voice wasn't as good as it was. She would have every excuse in the world. She's seventy three. Yeah, yeah. So that would just be phenomenal. And she, but I have to be does, honest. I saw yeah. that woman. A few years ago, when she when I was living in London, she was back in London. That yeah. woman rocked the Royal Out of Albert Hall like I have never seen. Oh, absolutely! Like, she hasn't lost a thing. She had, no. I think she's gained, mate. Like she's always been a beautiful singer, but raw man, she was hardcore. Like I was just. No, like, no, she. She's one of the few who who still has got it, and at a at an age where it's really stunning. Whereas, and I, obviously, I will not mention names. My favorite band of all time, you know, they still sound killer, but I wouldn't say the vocal component is still where it was at 10, 20 years ago. No. Okay. And I see that with so many bands. So my point to that is I probably won't be trying to become a singer, but just for the enjoyment, I could definitely see myself learning an instrument. That would be, that cool. be cool. I almost feel like an incomplete human by not being able to play anything. Well, you are effectively. I am. I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for triangle lessons. I think I'll be really are good you? for the triangle. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's probably the limit. No, I mean, I, man, I, think, I think about how cool it would be to just be able to pick up a, a guitar. Oh, and definitely, man. Sound. Oh, that would be so cool. Like, I, way cooler than, than being really good race car driver. Like, I think, I think about that. Oh, that's pretty like, cool as well, dude. That's, that's not an easy thing to do. Kind of cool. You know what's not cool about it? Here's what's not cool about being a race car driver. You can have all the talent in the world, all the marketability in the world, but if you don't have the millions and millions and millions of dollars behind you, really? it's all for naught. And that wow. was me. Yeah, and, and you think about, though, being an amazing musician – Sure, you're not everyone who who is talented is going to make it. You know, we know that. Oh, we've seen it. Phenomenally yeah. talented people still doing uh, phenomenally, and they'll never get a shot. And it's yeah. it's borderline tragic. But yeah. at least at least they have a chance, and they have you an know, outlet you know, for their passion, right? I guess yes, if you don't absolutely. have a racing car and all that back in, then you're not going to go and jump no. in the full Fiesta and tear down Miami High Road. Do you, know what I mean? you nailed it. And, and we can still no, sit in front of the crowd and sing. You absolutely nailed it. I was having this discussion. My brother, I'm going to say this because I, it's fucking true. My brother, uh, he's probably the most talented musician in my family. Wow. He is incredibly talented. The guy, the guy can sing. It's not his strength, and he'll be the first to say that. But he can sing, but he can play almost every instrument he is an incredible songwriter. He's an incredible producer. He, I mean, every song he's ever done, it's all him. He may wow. bring in a, a guy or a girl to do some back to do some backups, but that's it. He's so incredibly gifted, but he didn't make it. 
So he and I have a lot in common in that regard. But, but you know, one thing that he said, he's like, well, you know, I'm lucky, though, because I get to, he gets to play for hours a day. I have not been inside a racing car for seven years. Wow, I haven't even man. seen one. Because a day of practice in a high-level racing car is a minimum of $25,000 a day. Wow. Okay. Uh, up to 100000 a day. You know, so it's just, it's not, it's not a thing. And I'm very, I'm envious of people like you, you know, you're a fantastic musician and you're able to express that anytime you can wake up at three in the morning and, and play something. If you get an idea, I, I don't, I don't have that luxury and I'm trying to sound, you know, depressing, but it's true. So I, I really wish that I, I did have some sort of kind of passion outside of motorsport that I could actually do that would be great we need to so make a pact i think by the end of this year you and i yeah. need to have at least one guitar lesson okay i'm down okay. we can we can do it virtually you know tracy and i need to come to mexico we've actually been talking about in the not too distant future buying a house down there as a to get away from arizona in the summer okay, yeah. so hey I could work, man. Take Mate, up on that. I have an apartment here, always yours free, and a little studio here so we can Love play it. guitar. Right by the beach. Oh, shit, yeah. well, kind of. I'm all about it. Fantastic, dude. <laughs> so what <laughs> happened you. with uh, the whole pink and blue for two? Is that still and the wine? Is that still something that's going on? Or is that just on a no. bit of a down low at the moment? No, it's done. Um, we loved it. it. It was powerful. It it helped a lot of people. It was amazing, amazing. Um, Unfortunately, we just, my business partner and I, Chris, who's still one of my best friends, we're actually starting a new business together now. Um, he and I just didn't have the experience to run a charity, especially at that level. Right. And we didn't have, the charity didn't have the, the finances to hire, you know, a real professional to run the show and grow it. Yeah. So we, we tried and we tried and we tried and we almost got there and we almost landed some some big um, backers to, to fund it, but it just never worked out. And then with the wine, same kind of deal. It was a fantastic wine. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the wine itself at the price point was phenomenal. Yeah, Everyone loved the wine. They loved the packaging. And most importantly, they loved what it was for. Absolutely. But yeah, of course. It just got back to the same thing, man. We didn't have the finances to market it and promote it. It's and really we shit, got it. It. <laughs> It's always it's money. It's like even about helping career. people always boils down to bloody money and not having the right backing. It boils down to money. If you look at, at my racing career, it was 120% a money situation from day one to the last day. It was the same with the charities. It was the same with the two different wine brands. And yeah, then, it's just and money yeah, is... Well, it makes the world uh, around, you know, but see, well, you yeah, go to yeah. England and look at the, the services, like the, the, like the, um, the electric service and the gas service, they made a six yeah. billion, a six billion pound profit last year. Oh yeah. I believe Why can't it. they invest that in projects like you, you know, people that yeah, try well, to that achieve and people hopes, that are doing but, some amazing good. But, but you know what? Look, I got to be fair. Chris and I, it's not, it's not what we did. We had a passion for it and we came up with a really unique and cool charity that, you know, got couples to proactively help one another to remind each other to have their annual screenings because it could yeah. save their lives. Yeah. But it, I just don't think we were the guys for it. Maybe I was the right person to be the spokesperson, but, but the, the managerial side of it, the nuts and bolts side of it, I just don't think that we were the people. And it's a shame because I think that could have been as big as any other um, charity like Komen or, or, or whatever, American Cancer Society, because it was so engaging yeah. for couples of all types, you know? Yeah. Well, who they, knows, dude? Who knows what the future huh? They also say to save one life is sacred. And you've probably saved yeah. dozens upon dozens and upon dozens because of, you know, of I'm hoping. your awareness and stuff like that. So, you know, hoping, you've, buddy. you've been phenomenal, mate. And, you know, you've probably you. literally saved hundreds of lives. So power Thanks. to you. So what does the future hold for Mr. Newton, John? What do you think? Well, I, I, I can't say too much about it, but we have, we, as in my business partner and I, Chris, who I've worked with on so many other projects, including both of the wine brands, 
we are starting a pre-mixed cocktail booze brand. Ooh. And yeah, and it's going to be really, really unique. We've, we've really done our due diligence. There's really nothing out there like it. Amazing. So it's a very competitive segment of retail. But if you can come in with something that hasn't been done yet, I think you have a good shot of, of success. Absolutely. So that's what we're working Definitely on. Definitely right it now. needs to be launched in Cancun's Riviera or in Mexico's Riviera Maya, I feel. That's, that, that could be a good look. I think you're right. It's drinking paradise here, mate. (laughs) Well, the thing is, the brands, this is not a serious brand like my other ones. This is just straight up a good time brand. Nice. It's it's targeted predominantly at at women, women of all ages. Um, And it's really a good time brand. It's, It's a brand that we hope that, you know, let's say, for example, um, a group of girls are having a, a bachelorette party. What do they call it in England? Stag hen, and hen what? Party. Hen. Right. Yes. So, you know, if it's a bachelorette or a hen party, we're hoping that this becomes kind of the, the woohoo, yeehaw, good time brand that, that women go to. And I really Amazing. think it's going to. Well, will, will you Thanks, come man. back on the show and let us know all about oh. it? Me and my friends, me and my dogs. Will hey, you let me know all hey, about hey, it when it's all launched? Uh, anything for you, buddy. Of course. You are amazing. That's a bloody Me too, wonderful. man. So <laughs> I'm, I'm just about to run out of time on this week's show, but I want to thank you right. so much for being part of, of this, this um, project for me because it's been amazing. I can't believe I got to 50 shows now. So you'll have to come back. Guess. If not before, then definitely for the hundredth. Absolutely, I'm coming back, buddy. I may, line me up as your hundredth guest, and I promise to be on camera dolled up and ready to go you you definitely would not want to see me right now i'm fresh off the treadmill well i'm sure there'll be a few audience members that will be dying to see you in that condition dude <laughs> but people at home you've heard this okay this has been said that he's this side he's been he's told me 100th show is back 100th show. Bloody lucky. and i hope when i come back for the 100th show i'll have a nice beautiful bottle of this new brand, which I can't say the name of yet, that we can do a virtual tasting together. <gasps> that would be bloody amazing. Oh Actually, even better. How about this one? I'll give you this. Tell me. If, if, if we can have the brands bottled by then, I'll send you a bottle so we can both do a real virtual. That, I guess that doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'll drink it here. You drink it there. Exactly. That sounds bloody amazing. That's the goal. That's the goal. bloody amazing. So, yeah, absolutely. All right, we'll make that a plan. We'll make that a plan. So, guitar, incredible branded booze. Yep. That's not a bad future then, is it? That'll keep you going for the next. I mean, I I can't guarantee much with the guitar, but I I think I can guarantee the booze brand. (laughs) Mate, if you've got the booze brand up and running, you won't need the guitar. That's true. (laughs) You can you can hire players in. That's not a problem. I actually bought a guitar here, but um, because I have so much to do on a daily basis, by the time I actually got around to sitting down to do a YouTube kind of tutorial, the net because of the heat here and the humidity, the neck uh, had completely warped. So I was like, oh, yeah. So I had to throw it away. No, I, a, so I don't know what to do. I have a similar, not not nearly as cool of a of a of an item, but I have a. We about six months ago we ordered a new wooden dining table, and it wasn't made in the states. I forgot where it was made, but long story short, with the humidity change from wherever it was manufactured to getting to the desert, the table is destroyed. Really, utterly ruined. Yeah, so I, I know all about wood getting affected by humidity and and dry air man not a good yeah, thing crazy. so there's a bit of a life check. where what area was you living before how is it how's the climate different to where you was before oh man it's it's utterly polar opposite i went really? from a very kind of yeah i went from a reasonably wet climate in in the carolinas oh, to okay. yeah to as dry as it gets i mean it's a hell's it, furnace it, Oh, hell's, hell's something. (laughs) 
Interesting. So why did you decide to move somewhere like that? Had you visited, yeah. spent time in that kind of area before, so knew it was going to be, or was it just like, ah, oh, this place is no, nice? No, it yeah. was... Oh, shit. I don't always make the best decisions in life. I've made some <laughs> great ones. I've also made some tragic ones. This was definitely not one of the best ones. On paper, it seemed really good, but yeah. you know how you know how paper and practice work, right? Mate, yeah, I've got marriage documents on paper. That wasn't the best decision. To be yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> I know but, all about but in photos, it, your place looks amazing. And well, how that's cool the thing. You look like amazing nature and rattles. No, no, don't get background. me wrong. It has a lot going for it. It's it's absolutely stunning. Um, Three hundred and sixty degrees worth of, of beautiful Beauty. view. It's yes, really absolutely. amazing. It looks amazing. Look, it has a. In all fairness, it has a ton going for it. It's just that the four months of summer are so awful that it almost negates the positive of the other eight months. Where it's amazing. I mean, dude, yeah. for eight months, the weather is actually amazing. Wow. It it's never just, gets too cold. Too. It doesn't rain much. It's, it's dry. It's phenomenal. But when summer hits, you forget all about how good it was because yeah. you're just trying to cope. Yeah. You don't go outside, basically. It's just, yeah. it's too yeah. awful to go outside. Well, I said, it's a bit like that here. You know, I'm a London boy. You know, yeah, right. I live in the tropics where, you know, I just seen like it's been really amazing w w um, weather in London over the last couple of weeks and everyone's going to yep. shit about, oh, my God, it's going to be like 38 degrees. And I'm like, oh, my right, God, right. it's like our daily temperature here with 100 exactly. percent humidity and I can't afford air con. So I've only got fans and windows open. <laughs> you know, it's like uh, yep. but, but London is like falling apart with this with this three days of weather. And I'm it like, is oh, silly. I have to it, do that. It is pretty silly. Basis. I did. I know, I, but they don't have, it's, it's uncommon to have AC in London, right? Oh, completely, completely. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, mean it we got it here, but it doesn't mean you can afford it. I mean, yeah, you know, exactly. like and the people that I'm okay, I'm kind of middle of the road, but, you know, there's a lot more people, especially in the area that I live that are super poor, right. you know, yeah. that haven't even got, like, mosquito net up at their windows. So I just kind of yeah, think, yeah. Oh, I don't know how you're coping. Like, I struggle by the time I've come to the end of August, September, I'm done. I'm like through with the yeah. trips. And then by the yeah, time I mean, so November, December, I'm like, oh my God, this is lovely. There are always butterflies in the garden. Yeah. <laughs> it's like everything. I forget about like really? scratching my skin off my face to try and get cool. And now it's lovely again because it's December. It's like yeah, you do, <laughs> you do quickly fall in and out yeah. of the hatred of, of yeah. one thing or another. Yeah, no, I mean, look, like, on no. the... On the flip side, though, um, you don't have a seven hundred and fifty dollar electric bill every month like I do in the summer, so that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. I think it's you and missus, cool. I think you and your missus need to come and visit, mate. I think maybe Mexico is a yeah. better option. I it could be, man. There's there's a lot about Arizona that does not work for us, but that's that's a different conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And <laughs> also, you know, blessing because. You're in a stage of life where you can go and visit other places to break up that intense heat for the four months that you have, right? Uh, yes and no. See, that's where having four animals makes life. Is, of course. As much yes. as we love them, and they're the, the best thing in our lives, we can't really go yeah. anywhere. Yeah, true that, true that. Well, you so can, you, if you we can't bring them here, by the way, just to let you know. No, uh, I can't bring them there. And if, if we do go to Mexico for a visit, it has to be, you know, a four a four day or five day or max. Yeah, no, I know how that rolls. Because I've not I've not been away from here for four years, and I've not actually left my yeah. house for more than five hours in four years because you, you met my little two legged boy. Yeah. If I don't give him water, yeah. he's not getting any. <laughs> so. No, exactly. And I have I have one dog that's so absolutely bonkers that you know I can't leave him with a dog sitter because she'll quit or he'll quit <laughs> we'll have to come back from wherever we're at. So yeah. Could be an idea I for your home alone movie or something. What's that? Could be a new idea for some kind of, you know, like dog, a home alone movie kind of thing. Yeah. K canine home alone. Yeah. That could be cool. Man. Yeah. He's... Yeah. No, it is a constraint. A big responsibility. It is. But... I would not change it for the world, but it definitely, 
changes your life. You know, you yeah. can't just piss off to Europe for two weeks. That's yeah. done. Yeah. That's not a thing. Yeah. I can't. I'd love to go to Australia and see my family and friends. Yeah. I haven't been there in, in 10 years, but wow. I can't bring my wife because she can't go because who's going to watch the dogs? Absolutely, yeah. Well, it's just that I live on my own, so I can't go back and visit my mum in London. I've not been back for three uh, years. So, yeah, I know how it rolls, man. Oh, well. I do, man. You know? But hey, it's okay Everything because is on the cards, right? There's always ways well, at some point. Well, like you said, what they what they give you makes it all worth it. Unbelievably, yeah, completely, man. I wouldn't change it for completely. the world. Completely, I wouldn't change it for the world. But Absolutely. but when you know you find a really patient, animal loving sitter, yeah. then you you and your missus come and spend a couple of days in the Riviera Maya, Cancun, and all this area is beautiful. You got it. Man. You've always got a place oh, here. So right. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to get my two-legged boy off for a wee-wee, as you do All right, buddy. when you're an international superstar. And, <laughs> <laughs> and we will catch up again very soon. Emerson, Newton, John, you're a diamond, mate. Thank you so much for being you on my show. Man. And we'll, we'll right, be in man. touch very soon. Awesome. Thank you. Take care, my friend. See, See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. It was so incredibly cool to be chatting to the one and only Mr. Emerson Newton-John. What a super guy. And please make sure you are following him and showing him some love on all of his social media platforms. Keep an eye. Who knows what that guy is going to be doing next. Thank you so much for being part of my Jaden show. Thank you so much for being part of my 50th episode. Oh my goodness, that's incredible. And I'm looking forward to celebrating the 100th with you as well. Please like, please subscribe please share, please comment. It's always lovely to hear from you and how you're doing. And I will see you next week for the 51st edition. I'm not going to be putting a 51 behind me. It's okay. We'll go back to the normal studio. It will be cool. I will see you next Sunday on The Jaden Show with another fantabulous person. I'm going to leave you with a bit of music, actually. This was recorded in North Devon, England, in Westwood Ho by my friend um, and also the one of the managers and the... Um, oh, my gosh, how do you see? Like the leaders i don't know of my jc fundraising charity in the uk she helped me with this video she's super amazing it was done in a place i used to live beautiful place called westwood ho in north devon very different to mexico but equally as beautiful this is a beautiful song that i first heard actually on emerson's auntie's album um which I think she was singing this with a, another incredible artist called Amy Sky. This is called The Water Is Wide, an old Irish folk song. You're going to love it. I'll see you next Sunday on The Jaden Show. Take care. Stay beautiful. The water is wide, I cannot get o'er, and neither have I wings to fly. Give me a mold that can carry two, and both shall grow, my love and I. A ship there is, and she sails the sea. She's loaded deep, as deep can be, but not so deep as the love I mean. I know not if I sink or swim. I leaned my back up against an old Thinking it was a trusty tree But first it made and then it broke So did my love prove false to me Oh,
love be handsome and love be kind and love so true when first is new but love grows old and waxes cold and fades away like morning dew When Coco shares her silver bells And will my love come back to me When roses bloom in the winter's noon Then will my love return to me Then will my love return to me?